There are so many questions about what really went on during World War II behind closed doors and what has been deemed classified and not public knowledge. We are going to dive deep into these questions to get answers and hopefully provide more of an understanding of what really happened on this tiny British Channel Island of Alderney, or as some know it, Adolf Island. Is it true the Nazis established a concentration camp on Allied soil? New investigations exposed details that were kept hidden for decades about Nazi concentration camp on one of the British Channel Islands. After the end of World War II, officials' reports downplayed horrendous atrocities at the camp. During World War II, Alderney, part of an archipelago between France and the United Kingdom, held the only Nazi concentration camps to be built on British soil. Hard labor, beatings, and starvation were common punishments for inmates in prison. Yet their suffering was not widely known even after the war ended. Using declassified satellite images and ruins from Alderney's silt camp, archaeologists have pieced together the story of the camp. Researchers created the first map of the camp built in 1942 by the Nazis and used it first as a concentration camp and then as a forced labor camp for political prisoners. The Nazi organization Tat built at least four camps on the island and all of them named after the Frisian Islands in the Northern Sea. This was an effort to reinforce the island as part of Hitler's Atlantic Wall and as an early warning for mainland invasion. The first commander of the satellite camp was SS Captain Maximilian List, who was replaced in March 1944 by SS Lieutenant Colonel George Braun. Kurt Klebeck, the deputy to the commander, was also responsible for feeding and housing the prisoners. Under Himmler's command, List was ordered to keep the island defended to the last man. If the island was invaded, to kill every last prisoner, keeping them from being captured and interrogated. Alderney, the northernmost of the British Channel Islands, measures about 3 miles 5 kilometers long and 1.5 miles or 2.4 kilometers wide. According to a study published online March 30, 2020, in the journal Antiquity, hundreds of prisoners were originally housed at Silt, about 20% of whom died due to poor treatment. A Nazi paramilitary group called Tatenkampfverband, Death's Head Unit, took over the prisoner supervision at the time. In 1943, more than 1,000 people were transferred to Silt, far exceeding the capacity of the camp. A study performed on Silt survivors found that they were forced to work 12-hour days with little food, and that the guards would beat them with everything they could lay their hands on. Silt and other concentration camp records were systematically destroyed as Germany's hold on Europe weakened in order to conceal the evidence of their crimes. Following Silt's closure in 1944, British authorities conducted approximately 3,000 interviews with survivors, witnesses, and German officers on Alderney and the mainland. The scientific study released the official report in 1981 to the public, softening the worst details to quell rumors about the death camp. Alderney doctors were provided pre-printed death certificates of only 103 people that died at Silt of faulty circulation or heart failure, according to Nazi records. The study's authors presented new findings disclosing that at least 700 people perished at Silt in the recently discovered mass graves on Alderney, far exceeding the 103 detailed in Nazi records. This work has shed a new light on the German occupation of Alderney and, crucially, the experiences of the thousands of forced slave laborers who were sent there, said lead study author Caroline Sturdy Calls, a professor of conflict, archaeology, and genocide investigation at Staffordshire University in the United Kingdom. Historical, forensic, and archaeological approaches have finally offered the possibility to uncover new evidence and give a voice to those who suffered and died on Alderney so many years ago, Calls said in a statement. Why didn't the Allies liberate Alderney prior to the Normandy invasion? The Channel Islands were overlooked due to their small size and not being a significant target when Normandy was the priority. The Normandy invasion was the more important plan to end Nazi tyranny across Europe and getting a foothold somewhere in the mainland rather than focusing efforts on such small islands that offered no strategic advantage. Did the Allies know about these concentration camps on Alderney? According to the BBC, the occupation of the Channel Islands had seven key points to think about. 1. Only British soil to be occupied during the war. 
Two, after the German offensive raced through France, the British government decided the islands were not strategically important and left them undefended. Three, this was not communicated to the Germans who bombed St. Peter Port Harbor and targets in Jersey, killing 44 people. Four, German troops landed in Guernsey by plane on 30 June 1940, the start of the five-year occupation. Five, the islands were turned into an impregnable fortress on the express orders of Adolf Hitler. Six, a fifth of all defense works in the Atlantic Wall, a defensive line stretching from the Baltic to the Spanish frontier were built on these islands. Seven, the island's governments continued under German rule, which some see as collaboration. The Germans surrendered Alderney on 16 May 1945, but the island was still uninhabited until December 1945 due to the removal of 30,000 landmines, rat infestation, and imposing concrete fortifications. Many homes were missing the wooden doors and furniture having been used as firewood for the German occupiers. The Alderney government has the sway of the islanders wanting to forget the atrocities that took place on the island as opposed to unearthing the truth and haunting reminders of Alderney's dark chapter in history. Only with the permission from the Alderney government will we find peace for those in the mass graves and possibly discover who they were and why they were imprisoned there. Researchers await the government to grant access to exhuming the bodies.